Hey guys, how's it going? Skigoni here, and as you guys can see, today we are reacting to Dingo Doodle's Fool's Gold Campaign, Episode 15, Revealing Secrets. Now, let's just get this all out of the way, so we can get straight into this. I don't own anything done by Dingo Doodles. All credit will be down in the description below, both the video and the channel. And with that being said, let us begin. <coughs> Got it. Warned. Okay. This isn't gonna be a Got roller it. coaster anymore. This is gonna be a free fall. Now I can mm. tell you probably remember what happened last time. Yeah. Because I delivered one of my most brutal cliffhangers so far. I remember. But quick recap. We did prep for taking down a monarchy. We met Bucket. Arena yep. went a bit revenge mode. We defeated yep. Buclair, and then. Sips, Sips died. died. His body lying still on the ground, and his heart completely stopped. Stopped. And we don't yes. know why. <laughs> so the group looks over <laughs> Sips' body and sees no fatal wounds, no poison, no reason for him to simply drop dead. Gothi tries to cast something to help, but nothing, nothing. works. Oh, He's gone. He's gone no. somewhere else. As his soul floats in the black, he sees a light off in the distance. Something draws him towards it. A feeling of warmth? No. Comfort? No. It's determination. As he starts to run towards it, against his will. And that free floating feeling suddenly becomes weighted. His feet touch solid ground, but it's not just ground, it suddenly feels of grass and dirt and then stone. He's no longer in the void, he's in a city. One with architecture angular and precise. A city of the Foreclaimers, and it's being attacked. Oh. It's night. People are screaming in panic, as metallic raptor-like creatures create carnage in the streets, killing What's anyone happening? in their path with their razor-sharp teeth. Large buildings crumble with devastating blasts of energy that screech through the air. Sips is witnessing not a war, not a battle, but a slaughter. As he Massacre. finds himself watching the past and the end of an empire. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what? In front of him is Lucky. not the light of the astral plane. It's a portal. A large one. People are fleeing towards it. It's their only the way out. They need to, to escape. Where? But from what, exactly? Yeah. The metallic beasts devastate the scene, but the fear in the people's eyes aren't just of the rampaging monsters, but the fear of something much more powerful. Sips looks behind him to find... Is... Nothing. There's nothing chasing him. In fact, he feels no fear because he's not running away from anything. He's the one the Foreclaimers are running from. He is the one they are scared of. Oh! Because Sips realizes that these arms, these legs, this body, they're is not, not his. his. There's someone it's else's. It's black like ash, with white lines running through it, eyes cold and calculated, and a large white crystal in the center of his forehead, one that radiates like red hot metal. Sips is just a bystander living through this being's memories. Sips sees what this man sees. He hears what this man hears. He feels what this man feels. Rage, determination, and the need for revenge. It's overwhelming. He must Why? reach this portal. They what? must not escape. I will not fail. But why? What? The portal What starts revenge to close. for what? No. You will not let them slip through your fingers. You can't. Closer, the determination builds. Closer, the anger grows. Closer, you must wipe them out. But you don't. And then... Because just as you enter the portal, it closes. The force and magic crushing down on you, ripping oh. and tearing you apart as you feel yourself shatter, breaking into pieces. And coming with it, a crippling feeling of failure. So, 
are then, we being told? Hold on, wait. Are we being told that? Sorry for pausing, but are we being told that he wasn't killed? He was the the gem wasn't shattered by a fight, a, a big battle. It it happened because he was caught between technically two different places at the exact same time. He rises. Sips' oh, heart is still not beating, but his corpse gets up and starts to walk on its own uh-oh. towards Buclair. Uh-oh. Do the you gem. It? No. I want to see... What? What happens. What? Losing his control, Sips again becomes a bystander in his own body. His what? His corpse arriving at Buclair's no, very dead he's, body. D- d- he gem. He down. Gem. In one motion, plunges his hand straight into her back, ripping out her black, still dead heart, and sees a shard of a familiar white crystal embedded into it. Without hesitation, Sips then eats the heart along with the shard in front of everyone. And then... <gasps> he lives. Sips now senses it. He sees what? it. All the crystals in this room, arenas, ears, what? eyes, and what? boucleurs, that what? he feels move inside of his own body without what? pain, up his throat, behind his ears, like it's being drawn towards something, something what? larger. When Arena did a detect magic, when she sensed that overwhelming power back in episode 12, that yeah. wasn't from Buclair or eyes and ears. No. That was because placed directly in the middle of Sips's head is his crystal. A shard larger than anyone else's. Sips, are you ah! Suddenly Sips can hear through three sets of ears. He can see through three sets of eyes. Like he's connected to Arena, eyes, ears, and himself all at once. It's so this must be why... Oh. What happened? What, what, what's, what's going, going on? on? Just the shut up! The room is spinning. He can't keep himself steady. Whoa. Hold, hold on there. Shut up. Sit! Shut up! Shut up! Just stay quiet. It. Stop! And through the madness and crushing panic, Sips hears a voice cut through it all. One male, stern, and precise. Simply say, Concentrate. Oh I roll a concentration check and eventually bring my senses back to focus. Okay. What was... What the hell is going on? What was that? (laughs) I don't... What was that? Okay. You did something to me. What did you do? Us? We... We did nothing. Like hell. What are you... What are you talking about? Okay. I have a damn crystal in my head. Whoa. Wait. What? What what do you mean? A crystal a, in it, my goddamn head. Brain. I saw it. I can see yours, theirs, and mine. These crystal witches must have put it in my head while I was asleep. Or something. We, we did no such thing. Liars. Die, oh, calm down. On. Please. We don't know what you're talking about. Sip. Would you just calm, calm down? Calm down. Well, then, if you're not going to tell me, then I'll kill you both right now and sort it out later. That's not a good idea. Bad idea. Very bad. Stop it. Just calm down. Think things through. And he storms off. Oh, okay. Well, read the room. Yeah, arena. I was going to say. <laughs> now, when I write these episodes, I think back to the jokes our characters made during the sessions. I want you guys to experience the humor, but to be honest, I don't remember this session being very funny. Ugh. Our characters were just tense. Yeah. And Sips finds his way back to his room. I feel room. like scared, Sips, confused. You're in a room that's immaculate, one of luxury. You see delicate pink curtains draped over a bed made of mahogany with sheets of the softest materials. Oh, no. You hear the gentle singing of birds outside your window. You smell a sweet scent of expensive perfumes with a hint of lavender. You feel soft carpet under your feet, and you taste blood. 
as you stand in this pristine room, covered in it. What do you do? I destroy the room. I'm not entirely sure why I made Sips destroy the room. Maybe it was his frustration of losing control again. Maybe it was the feeling of not wanting to be in a room that was so damn perfect when his life was not. And maybe it was him taking back control. Because at least if he decides to destroy something, if he really wants his life hell, it will be on his own uh, goddamn terms. Or maybe... Uh... He was just tired. Tired of this room. While the group tries to calm down and make out what just happened, Guffy hears, well, uh, Sips destroying a room. <laughs> I think I'd better. Okay. Yeah. So she makes her way to the now destroyed room. Well, say it. Say what? About how not to freak out, Sips. Don't worry, Sips. You got arena, sneeze and eye. We'll help you fix it. We'll figure it out. Like we always do, right? No. I wasn't gonna say any of that. No. What I was coming here to say was... That was scary. Yeah. You died... And for the first yeah. time, we couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything. I was scared. Yeah, I was about to say scared. And I ate a little girl's <laughs> heart. And you that, ate that, yes, a little girl's yes, heart. You, you did, potato. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, potato that wasn't black the only heart. scary thing that happened. <laughs> oh, God, there's more. There is. When, I, I... when my heart stopped. I saw something. Something weird. I I think it had to do with the past, with the disappearance of the four claimers. It, it was like watching a memory or a nightmare. I was there, but it wasn't me. Ugh. Yeah. It's hard to explain. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, it's okay. Uh, Just try. Okay. As Sips describes to Gothi about what he saw, the destruction, the portal, the man, she starts to remember something. You see, she's heard of this before. Because, in fact, she was there. Panicked, confused, and short of breath, Gothi runs through the ruined, blood-stained streets. Four claimer bodies line the cobblestone walkways. So... Screams cut through the air like knives, but she can't stop. There's no time. She must reach the portal. It's the only way out. And looking back, she sees him. The man with the cold, calculated eyes. Gothi feels fear, but more than that, she feels sadness. But she can't do anything now. She has to go. She must survive. And so she runs. Maneuvering through the alleys and broken streets, she manages to avoid the carnage. While catching her breath, she feels a hand grab her arm and pull her into the alleyway. First stunned, Gothi comes to recognize this person, a man she knows very well, and a family friend named Godric. She asks oh. if he has seen her father, and he reassures her that he is far away from all of this, and that they will be reunited soon. A small moment of relief breaks the tension, but not for but, long. Yeah. As Godric then says, let me bring you to him and in one cruel motion stabs into the center of Gothi's back with a thin steel blade. She tries to let out a cry of pain, but the sheer shock leaves her gasping for an explanation. Her body goes into shock. Then Godric, grabbing her face, raises the sharp, thin blade towards her cheek. What? Now, I will make sure you will be lost to time, and that no one will ever see this face again. Godric what? did something with that knife what? that was not just cruel, but monstrous. Because you see, Gothi now remembers. It's all coming back. What? I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> Maybe I chose to not remember. No. I get it now. Because you see, Sips, that's 
bats. That's bats. That's why I don't have a face. Ah, <laughs> oh. oh. that image, it's burned into my mind. What? What? Why? What? Why? <laughs> I'm assuming, yes, this leads to add. Okay. What? Why? Huh. Oh. You know, I forgot. I forgot how much this, uh, th this, this kind of stuff pulls me in. All right, again. This is only for those people who stick around long enough and actually care about what's afterwards. I am going to be trying to upload more videos. Um, I just need to find my pacing again. So it's going to take a bit of time. However, I am just trying to think and figure out how I'm going to manage said time so that I'm actually able to do what I say. So it's not going to be happening immediately. There are going to be videos coming out more frequently. However, it's not going to be an instant transition. I apologize, but it's just how this is going to work. So please be patient with me, guys. I'll figure this out. I'll work on it. And then hopefully I can get back to what I was doing before. Anyway. Thank you all so much for coming out to watch this video. You have a fantastical day or night, whichever one it is for you guys. And I hope to see you guys in the next video that I do. Bye.